Welcome back, Zero K fans, to Natalie the Dawn. I remain Shadow Theory 333, your host, and we're going to continue tonight with the match between Exploit and Surf Maniac on Lowland Crossing, which is not a map I've seen in a while. But let's check it out. I haven't also ever seen Surf Maniac play. I'm curious how they play. Apparently not a new player, or not particularly new, but around the same skill level or elo level as Exploit, so this should be a relatively even game. Exploit going for Shield Bot, Surf Me Net going for Cloaky Bot, and very early getting a lot of Conjurers, wanting to do the, or no, just one, wanting to do the Reclaim game a little bit. Mostly going for Defense from the looks of it, not really going for Reclaim. Bearing in mind, there is a fair amount of Reclaim here, like 600 Metal, 200 Energy, right, right in your main base, right where you start out. Exploit also not going too much for Reclaim either. I mean, people were pointing out in the last match I cast on... Uh, was it Altier Crossing that reclaim right early on is not always the most useful thing? Like, you do want to have a good solid economy that's not reclaim based. And I understand that. I understand why you might not want to say have five bandits, I mean, five convicts or five conjurers just going around the map reclaiming everything and then suddenly you have nothing. Totally understand that. I'm just, you know, it still seems like it's a useful thing, not to that extreme, but just to have as a supplementary income. Or as a way of jumpstarting your economy so that you don't end up in a situation where you don't have energy, you don't have metal, and you need one or the other. Like, right now, this Conjurer would probably be better served reclaiming metal. Or, sorry, reclaiming energy. Actually, reclaiming metal, heck. That's reclaiming stuff. Especially given that Exploit's being very aggressive right now. But yeah, just reclaiming stuff right now, that would get Surf Maniac up above this low energy. And then it would make the metal more useful. Or they could reclaim both, and then they'd get a nice quick shot of metal and energy, and that would allow them to avoid having to deal with the slower construction. Speed up their construction just a little bit. So not a huge deal, but just enough to get their construction going a bit faster. Potentially. I don't know. I mean, it's some weird math to it, and last time I talked about it, there was a lot of arguments about the specifics of the payoff structure, whether or not it was even worth it, just from the sheer fact that you are using build power on reclaim rather than on construction, and you could be using the bell, bell power and construction instead, and now you're paying essentially to reclaim. Like you're paying for the worker in order to reclaim with it. I don't know. I feel like I feel like questions of timing and relative speed are not really taken into account as much. Even though that seems like that's the real important thing when it comes to reclaim, is how fast are you getting your stuff built up? Like how quickly are you building up compared to how quickly you could build up? or could build up. And Exploit right now is actually doing pretty well for energy. Unfortunately, very wind-based. They are going to want to set up some solar plants to deal with the shortfall, or possibly be on the ready for reclaim. Because right now, sheesh, that really dropped. Yeah. Get some reclaim going, or get some solar plants. I mean, right now, reclaim, eventually solar plants. I could see that. But Surf Maniac managing to get their side of the map completely taken for the most part. There are still a couple straggling bandits. Exploit is doing a pretty good job of just setting up for knowing what's going on. They know what Surf Maniac's up to. Man, I mentioned the last game, I felt like on CCR, Exploit was having a hard time just getting in and doing their thing. I wasn't sure. I thought it was because they were feeling a bit scared. Now I think it's more because CCR is just so big. They, well, I mean, it might be because CCR is so big, it's really hard to do this sort of setup. Whereas in a smaller map like Lowline Crossing, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more practical to set up a few bandits here or there just to know when your opponent's going to try to expand somewhere. And we know notice that Surf Maniac's not doing the same thing. I totally agree with Exploit doing this, by the way. Like, just knowing what your opponent's up to, losing a couple raiders like that, totally worth it. Especially since that actually wasn't just losing a couple raiders. Managed to take out a few of Surf Maniacs, too. So yeah, right now, unfortunately, both players are accessing Exploit. You may want to get energy that's not on a wind claw, or not based on wind. Yes, wind power is cheap, but this map, it's 0 0.1 to 2.5. It's not worth it. Maybe if you put it on... What's the hill? Well, no. Even on the hill, it's only 0 0.3 to 2.5. That's not worth it. It's only worth it if it's like 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 to 2.5. Because at that point, you're almost guaranteed to have it be at worst, slightly worse than the equivalent cost of solar plants. And most likely far better. But it looks like Exploit does have some solid energy going on. 
Surf Maniac, on the other hand, focusing entirely on solar plants. Which... Um, don't totally agree with. Like, I do think there is a place for wind. But I do agree with for the most part, just because, yeah, I, I did just point out, no, wind's kind of volatile. So, solar kind of makes sense. Maybe have a little bit of wind early on, but then again, why? Why am I saying that? Because there's reclaim! There's loads of reclaim. If you want to have super early, but not super reliable power, just reclaim. And exploit going for the geothermal plant as well. So exploits really got the macro down. Their entire half of the map's taken. Surf Maniac, on the other hand, just now taking the eastern side of their map. Or their side of the map, rather. I mean, Lowland Crossing being the way it is, we aren't going to see a lot of interaction, just because there's three choke points. And in practice, pretty much just these two. The one over to the west isn't usually used outside of Amphib matchups. So probably we won't see a whole lot until a bigger push comes in. Rogue's coming in to try to, looks like, break the eastern side. Bandit's not going to bother, though, because, I mean, just set up a warrior at the choke point, as Surf Maniac has done. Bandits can't do much. They can do a bit. They're not as war as bad off as Glaives are, but it's still not great. On the other hand, managed to free that up. Are we going to see follow-up Bandit? Not yet. Although Exploit's got... Wow, Exploit's got a lot of economy going on. Got loads of economy going on. Surf Maniac's struggling to keep up. I mean, Exploit is still accessing, but at least they have about 30 build power. Or actually, no, 40 build power now. No, never mind. That's 50. Yeah, energy's being a little bit of a limitation, but they are reclaiming their way to a decent energy economy. So yeah, that's actually working out okay. Don't agree on the storages, though. Unless they're planning on using that to build up a factory or just burst build something, which they don't really have the build power to do. Like, what they need right now is more solar plants. Like, if you're going to burst build something, burst build either a fusion plant or a load of solar plants. Or maybe Moho Geo. I think Moho Geo is a thousand, though. So like, a thousand total, so it would take about... Actually, with this... If they produce no more metal... Sorry, no more metal. Mo no more units. I think they'd be able to do a Moho Geo in 20 seconds. And then they'd have no energy concerns for the rest of the game, assuming that the Moho Geo is not blown up. At which point they'd have bigger problems, but yeah. Looks like that's not how they're going to go, though. Surf Maniac is getting their production up, but way behind. Way, way behind. We do have a sniper coming in here trying to help, or Spectre rather, trying to help out. But unfortunately, not much. And Surf Maniac apparently been investing a lot into their commander. Mostly Natalie with a bit of, well, bit of anti-riot, well, bit of riot capacity, bit of nano, a lot of nanolathe. So it's a riot builder on a recon commander chassis. An interesting combination. I can kind of see the use of it, but I feel like that might be a little bit of a tricky expenditure. At the same time, though, Exploit was naked expanding the western side. Snurf Maniac will be able to take advantage of that. Exploit's commander is not upgraded. It does have an... Well, it's barely upgraded. It has a machine gun, but otherwise not much. But Surf Maniac losing the entire eastern side, but Exploit, even though they're losing the western side, they have a pretty strong economy overall. Enough production to deal with it. They do have a lot that's stored up, so at least they won't run out... Well, they run out relatively quickly. This is now 2,000, not 500, but it's still... Actually, if that's the case, that's 250 metal right there. They're probably going to be okay. Exploit's probably going to be able to weather this storm of glaives over to the side. Especially since that's kind of stopped. And at the same time, Surf Maniac lost the entire eastern side. They're not rebuilding it. Why are they not rebuilding it? They have a 35 metal per second build power commander right there. It could rebuild every single one of these in two seconds each. Like, literally two seconds each. Surf Maniac has the, ener has the, well, maybe not quite the energy for it, but definitely has the metal for it. A bit more energy and they'd be fine. Like, they don't even need to worry about build power. Their commander could very rapidly build up the metal for that. And also, if they wanted to, build up the energy. If they wanted to very rapidly either reclaim energy or just set up a few solar plants or wind generators. Probably solar plants, but still, they could do that very rapidly. Like... This is the thing I tend to criticize more than anything. It may seem that a lot of my criti criticisms when I'm commentating are a little bit inconsistent. The reason I may be inconsistent is because I'm not criticizing specific actions so much as I'm criticizing commitment. Because, say, in this case, Surf Maniac has a commander that's upgraded for Nanolathe. And we're not 
these are dynamic commander morphs. So Surf Maniac made the decision at every single upgrade stage to get more build power. But the thing is, they're not committing to, they're not using that build power to either reclaim or build up, even though they desperately need those resources. And they have loads of reclaim to work with here. Well, maybe not energy reclaim, but metal reclaim for sure. But they have loads to work with, and they're not actually using it. And they're going to lose their commander, and that was... Shoot, I missed the amount of metal that was. It was probably about 3,000 metal total. They probably pushed in 2,000 metal just to that commander alone. And that's the thing, is that they didn't really commit. Whereas Exploit, I mean, yeah, they had energy problems right at the start. Sure, that was a problem. They, they fixed that, but that was an issue. However, they were set on their rating game. They were set in their rating scouting game, and they committed to it. They kept going with it. They didn't really spend money where they didn't need it. Pretty much everything they had, I mean, they actually got a lot of value out of those first bandits because of the information they had, and that helped a ton. And then the rogues, I don't know if any rogues even died. They just did a lot of damage. And it was a really good choice, too, because Surf Maniac went for a pretty hard warrior. Didn't really go for a huge amount of glaze. Some damage was taken to the western side, because Exploit did not... They naked expanded, which was a little risky. Didn't pay off totally, but there was a solid enough economy elsewhere that it didn't matter too much. Whereas Surf Maniac, it just feels like they spent money in ways that didn't really pay off. Oh, yeah, and... Yeah, the Cluster Bomb is another thing being pointed out. Yeah, the cluster bomb, that would have been that would have been handy. That's like I said, that's why I said it was a riot unit. It was a riot builder commander. And while the machine gun was sort of being used, the cluster bomb is a huge part of the riot capacity, and the nanolids were not being used at all, which is really surprising. I mean they might have been used earlier, but they certainly weren't being used then when it really mattered. So yeah. It's the thing, it's like if you're gonna build to a strategy, make sure to use that strategy. I mean, I, okay, with commanders, it's a little bit harder, so I will admit, there is the fact that once you invest in a commander to do a certain thing, it's stuck that way, so that might be a bit of a problem. But I still think, even if you have gotten stuck that way, build power is always useful, and machine gun cluster bomb is probably still fairly useful. I mean, it's not always useful. But most of the investment was nanolates, and build power is always useful. Like, early on in the game, you want to build stuff up. Actually, early on in the game is not super useful. It's useful once you get later on in the game and you have loads of resources to use it with. Which was the stage we were at. So, anyway. That's, that's kind of why my criticisms may seem a little bit inconsistent, is because... A lot of it's situational. Zero K is a very situational game, and so a lot of it just comes down to making sure that whatever you start, whatever you're trying to go for, you don't second guess yourself and end up investing money in something that you don't use. And I probably am guilty of that myself. Most people, most of us are. It's a really hard thing to make sure you actually focus on a particular strategy and stick to it. And zero K being what it is, you sometimes do have to switch off. Like sometimes a strategy just is not working. You do have to switch off, and you have to just not worry about your earlier investment. Maybe keep it in reserve so that you can use it later when it becomes useful, but it's it's a tricky balancing act, but that's how Zero-K is. That's the kind of game Zero-K is. You, you really have a lot of room to adapt, but that doesn't mean you should just be rant, you're just changing your strategy every minute just because you think it might help out. But knowing when to change your strategy is still really important because it's also really easy to do, so it's worth doing. Yeah, I know, that's confusing and kind of useless. So I'll just go to the next game because I'm rambling. So yeah, stay tuned for that. It'll be Felthos and Snuggle Base on Akalan Wastelands.